and explain it here in the studio and kind of set it up. We're going to let a video do the talking for us. Uh, we've got Fabio Gori. He's our Senior Director of Cloud Solutions Marketing here at Cisco. Fabio's going to tell you all about it. As soon as the video is done, we'll be right back here live. Thanks for being with us. All right, guys, welcome. Hey, it's so exciting we are here to talk cloud, and I've got my good friend Fabio Gori. Welcome. Hello, Rob, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Hey, I want to make sure I get this straight, for, uh, especially for the questions that I want to get into that I've got for you. Uh, I deal with a lot of the business units, and, and we're in the technologies and such like this, but your role is certainly cloud, and we're Cisco's vision around cloud, but specifically, what are you responsible for? So I'm responsible for marketing Cisco's cloud solutions, okay. um, which is really you know, a cross BU sort of, uh, sort of portfolio. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, within those solutions, you, I'm also responsible for product marketing or specific products like, uh, mm. you know, cloud management, orchestration, container platform, and the likes. But those end up being, you know, just components of larger solutions that we normally right. build. Yeah, okay, so, so really it is about bringing together multiple partners sometimes as well, so it's not just multiple groups within Cisco. Um, so, let's first understand, what, you know, kind of the, the, the check. We've talked cloud for a while, I think we're past any thought of this being any kind of a phase of some sort that we're in. We're in a reality of cloud, but then we get specifically into, because it's still too broad of a term. So first of all, how would you define where we are today? What's important for customers to understand yeah. about Cisco's relationship to cloud? Yeah, absolutely. So let's start from the business uh, kind of needs out there, okay. right? I mean, all the companies right now are, are executing their digital plans. And digital plans fundamentally means accelerating um, time to value, especially when it comes to, for instance, building new applications faster right. and faster. Okay. You're digitizing everything, you need more and more apps right. to interact with your customers, make your operation more efficient, and the likes. Okay. Now, how do you do this, right? You fundamentally pick up innovation from wherever it comes from. It could be from your own developers, right. but also, very often, you have a lot of fantastic uh, tools and software that come from the cloud. There is no one cloud, there are right. multiple clouds. Right. And so people want to use innovation from wherever it comes from. And this makes, actually, things complicated. Um, you get great business advantages, but pulling together all these different cloud services is fairly complex, right? So you're really talking about increasing internal velocity. Absolutely. And the ability to be more efficient in Absolutely. and of yourself as a company because we've all got to digitally move faster and more effectively. Absolutely. But there's more to it than even that. Cloud is a business conversation, and the challenge that IT has is fundamentally to be able to satisfy the business need of speed. In fact, uh, we're hearing from customers more and more. We have a Cisco uh, survey that says that 65% of IT executives w expects to see um, more and more need for speed. Oh, yeah. And this is very often now traded off for cost, like it's right. becoming more important. People ah. are ready to spend more when they get to the cloud. So even so they're even saying, hey, it's worth it, even if that doesn't mean it's not the lowest cost solution we're looking Absolutely. at per se, what's the most effective? <laughs> if I can speed. be twice as fast as my competitor, okay and I spend that, more, it does not matter. A long-term results. It. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, because you get a whole first mover advantage and yep. stuff as well. What do we mean, because I, I hear this term used a lot within Cisco, and I'll make sure we have it defined correctly, yep. but uh, native cloud, or cloud native, I think is how we say it. Yep. What do we mean when we say something is cloud native? Well, you know, um, I could respond easily saying there is a cloud native foundation, but <laughs> which yeah, is true. Right. But what really this means is adopting new methodologies for actually developing um, applications faster okay. and more uh, more efficiently. Um, it depends on where you're looking at, right? Okay. Uh, for instance, people are looking at the shift to containers in right, terms of right. how okay. the innovations are built. Many are uh, pointing to DevOps, which is fundamentally a philosophy right. that there isn't like a DevOps playbook, right? Yeah. DevOps to your impacts. point of internal development. Yeah, exactly. So okay. you need to get faster. You need to avoid uh, doing the the kind of uh, uh, test and dev uh, methodologies that we had in the past. People are still stuck uh, sometimes in the past. Right now, you got to be faster and faster in developing this this new releases. If you look at the web giants that have paid the way to this. Uh, they have multiple drops of the same software, sometimes two, three, four, five times in yeah. a single day. Yeah. Whereas a typical enterprise will probably uh, you know, launch a new software release in six months until yeah. recently. Now they're catching up to speed. Well, that's, that's a mindset matter. change, and I've heard, our dev, I've heard our DevNet team speak to this a lot because it's, it's the notion of, hey, change is normal yeah. as opposed to abnormal, whereas we'd be, we get ready for a change window every six months, yeah. oh, you're going to die quickly if, you, if you're doing something it's like that. It's a cultural yeah. change. So you need to, yeah, okay. absolutely, you need to change your business processes uh, and you need to change your IT processes, right? Yeah. Uh, you cannot open a tra six trouble tickets to get uh, a virtual machine to a developer. It's not going to work anymore. Yeah, 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 so, okay. So let me ask you, uh, on the terminology front once again, this, the notion of hybrid cloud versus, say, multi-cloud, yeah. 
I sometimes will use those interchangeably, but I think you were saying that's not correct. Absolutely. What's the, right way to look uh, at? The, the, the way we look at this is uh, at Cisco is fundamentally multi cloud is this business need of using multiple cloud services to satisfy okay. your business needs and innovation needs. Okay. Hybrid cloud is, in the end, you're going to end up using some clouds in a, in a pretty major way, right? Maybe more than other clouds, and you want to have a specific integration of your networking, your security, your cloud management, orchestration, the likes for that, with that specific cloud. Right. So you want to have a specific integration with Azure, you want to have a specific integration with AWS. Every cloud is different, and so you end up needing specific integration, yeah. right, with any given cloud. And because they're all different, these integrations are all different. Well, that's a good point too, because it's not like, oh, I'm an AWS person, or I'm a, uh, uh, you know, uh, Azure person. Well, that doesn't matter. They're both good at really different things and it depends on your application and more than likely you're going to end up using both and many others, others we haven't heard of yet or your own internally as well. So Cisco is making all this kind of come together much more smoothly. Absolutely. Like, you may have yeah. seen the AWS, uh, the Cisco solution for AWS, uh, for Kubernetes solution, uh, for example. And yes. what we've done is we integrated the security layer. So now you use the same set of keys to authenticate whether you're on-prem, uh -huh. right, on a cloud uh, container, or Cisco container platform on top of, say, Cisco Hyperflex, right? That's perfect. That's the on-prem. And uh, the Cisco EKS, which is the Elastic Kubernetes Service. So it's like uh, you have a single Kubernetes service across the public cloud in AWS and on-prem. That's an incredible advantage, and of course it gives you much more security and, and confidence That's around the solution itself. Well, I know your team's doing a really good job of presenting here on the show floor, and we're going to be getting more information on them soon. Fabio, thank you so much. Guys, thank you. Customers want to move from the traditional banking experience to something more digital. They want everything on their mobile phone, in real time, with a lot of transparency. The future for most of the big companies is that we'll need to manage a legacy infrastructure that uh, keeps running, and this is going to be here for a long time. A private cloud that helps us to solve some of the regulatory issues and some services that will be on the public cloud. Now we are starting to connect and leverage Cisco technology to integrate our private cloud with some of the public cloud vendors who will be uh, leveraging, like Amazon or, or Google. You need to be able to provide infrastructure as a service with the same KPIs that a public cloud offers at the speed of Amazon or, or Google, but also ensuring security and compliance that a bank and the regulators require. In order to manage the legacy environment, the private cloud and the public cloud, you need some companies that offer technology that operate in those three very different environments. The only one that was able to do that is Cisco. Cisco is a big shaper of a lot of the things that are happening in the digital space. VBA has been elected last year by Forrester as the best banking app in the world. We have been able to create a set of global banking APIs, so we build it once and it could be used by all of our banks. We are experiencing an exponential growth in the number of transactions in most of our banks. So we are growing at a rate of close to 50% a year the number of transactions. Even if we want to behave like a startup, we are a complex and big enterprise. Cisco has always proved with us and with our companies the ability to, to work in this space. The world that has started to, to be used a lot was trust. Trust means to make sure that it's a really a win-win uh, relationship. Trans means that we acknowledge the challenges of Cisco and Cisco acknowledge and understand our challenges and we work together for a, a common goal. And you can see that BBVA case study for yourself over in the Cisco Showcase all week long right here in Barcelona. Right now, it is time for our next innovation showcase, Reimagining IT for a Multi-Cloud World. We're going to toss it out to Kip Compton. Kostov Das, enjoy. Hello everyone and welcome to the Innovation Showcase Theater. My, My name's Toby and I have the pleasure of being your host today. Now we all know that to thrive in the new world of digital business, companies have to innovate like never before. So we're bringing you 11 sessions here at the Innovation Showcase, where we are going to share with you the latest solutions, service innovations, and best practices, which we know will inspire and engage you here at Cisco Live 2019. Now today we'll be looking at the topic of reimagining IT for a multi-cloud world. 
And to tell us all about it, I am happy to welcome Cisco's Kit Compton, who is SVP Cloud Platforms and Solutions Group. But before we hear from Kip, let's take a look at this video. Customers want to move from the traditional banking experience to something more digital. They want everything on their mobile phone in real time with a lot of transparency. The future for most of the big companies is that we'll need to manage a legacy infrastructure that uh, keeps running and this is going to be here for a long time. A private cloud that helps us to solve some of the regulatory issues and some services that will be on the public cloud. Now we are starting to connect and leverage Cisco technology to integrate our private cloud with some of the public cloud vendors who will be uh, leveraging like Amazon or, or Google. In order to manage the legacy environment, the private cloud and the public cloud, you need some companies that offer technology that operate in those three very different environments. The only one that was able to do that is Cisco. Cisco is a big shaper of a lot of the things that are happening in the digital space. We are experiencing an exponential growth in the number of transactions in most of our banks. So we are growing at a rate of close to 50% a year the number of transactions. Even if we want to behave like a startup, we are a complex and big enterprise. Cisco has always proved with us and with our companies the ability to, to work in this space. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, here at Cisco Live and for this session. Uh, I'm Kip Compton. I'm really excited uh, about the session today because we're going to have an opportunity to talk about the opportunities and the challenges that multi-cloud brings, what we're seeing happening in the industry, some of the challenges that our customers are facing, then what Cisco's strategy and how we're helping those customers. We're also going to talk about some of the exciting announcements that we made here in Barcelona including our Hyperflex Everywhere announcement and our Cloud Center Suite announcement. So thanks again for joining us and let's dive in. You know, it's been an incredible year for cloud. Um, you know, I think I was struck by the keynote yesterday, the theme of cloud not only changing uh, Cisco and touching every single architecture that we build at Cisco, but really touching our customers and not just touching our customers in their IT departments, but really impacting their business models and their business operations. I think David Geckler said it well when he said it was the biggest IT transformation of our time. And I think in fact it's one of the biggest business transformations of our time. But let's look a little bit deeper at sort of what are some of the trends that we see happening. And these are things that we saw emerge during 2018, but that we think will be key in 2019 as well. And you know, it's, it's hard to miss the emergence of Kubernetes as an open standard way of orchestrating containers. Um, that was an incredible, 2018 was an incredible breakout year for Kubernetes with every major cloud provider now offering uh, Kubernetes. Um, and increasingly on-prem Kubernetes solutions including uh, Cisco's own. We also saw the emergence of more nuanced approaches to dealing with legacy applications. You know, the days of discussing just like lift and shift, oh, the whole application will either be here or there are fading and giving way to more nuanced discussions about how can I integrate with that application where it is? How can I build new cloud native experiences leveraging the existing applications that I have? And that's, I think, an exciting development that really enables more businesses to capture the innovation in cloud and translate them into business results. There's an increasing expectation that the public data center, or public cloud and data centers act as one, you know, really making hybrid real. I think you saw some of the announcements here about that, and we'll talk more about that during the session as well. And then, of course, the growth of AI and ML workloads uh, has been incredible. And in fact, we're seeing some tremendous hybrid use cases there, and we'll talk about that a little bit in this session as well. You know, and it's good that cloud is, is moving along so quickly because we're seeing unparalleled demands on the business side. Companies are being forced not just to move faster, but to move with more agility not just get more done, but be able to change course and adjust to a rapidly evolving environment. We're also seeing the need for CIOs to create new digital experiences, whether it's for their customers, where it's becoming increasingly the way that they may compete with their competitors, 
or for their employees where they need to deliver new levels of productivity so that they get efficiency out of their digital business processes, can drive their business forward and, and compete. So multi-cloud is the new reality. And you know, multi-cloud, simply put, is companies using multiple cloud services. It sounds very simple, but it actually brings a lot of complexity. And it's interesting because cloud was originally supposed to be incredibly simple, and it's turned out to be uh, a little bit more complicated than people anticipated because of multi-cloud. Now, the driver that's, that's causing companies to go for multi-cloud is increasingly a focus on innovation and agility. It's less these days about cost arbitrage. I'll go to whichever cloud's cheapest and more about what services are available. Where can my developers get the fastest time to market? Where will my application deliver the best performance? And perhaps where are some of my partners or other people that I need to integrate with? So we did a survey with IDC, and the results were that 94% of enterprises were going to be using multiple cloud services if they weren't already. And of course, on those surveys, 94% is about the highest number you can ever get. Now, adding to that, uh, adding to this environment is the need to bridge the on-prem and the public cloud. Very few companies are actually born in the cloud companies. Most companies have critical business capabilities, applications, and data sets that are in their own data centers on-premise. And in order to get meaningful business impact from the innovation, they have to connect to that on-prem environment. So multi-cloud for us absolutely includes the on-prem environment. Private clouds as well as how we can then connect those private and public clouds to existing legacy applications. In fact, the same survey, 87% of enterprises said that hybrid was critical for them to get results. So this is a, a real factor in the marketplace. And unfortunately, it adds to the complexity. So now in addition to dealing with multiple different public clouds that may do things a little bit differently, customers are faced with having to bridge these public cloud environments with the private cloud environments, and they come from very different places, and they move at very different speeds, and they have very different rules. And these are, you know, they're challenges like cost modeling. How do I understand the cost of my applications? Maybe not only where would it be best to run it, but how can I optimize it, and how can I simply predict uh, my costs? I had one customer tell me, I've got one budget but multiple clouds. How do I project this and manage it? Um, things like application performance. You know, can I get a common way of looking at the performance of applications across these different environments? And if I have an application that stretches across these environments, can I understand what's contributing to the performance of the application? That's something you really need in a common way across your on-prem environments and your multiple clouds. Then there's things like ensuring compliance. These are very different environments, and that can be a, a big challenge for many of our customers. As we've had these discussions with our customers and as our strategies unfolded over the last 18 months, we found that there's really a critical role for Cisco to play. And a lot of our customers are looking to us to make their multi-cloud journey easier and to make it so that they can really harness the innovation of these different clouds and connect to their on-prem data center. And we found that there are several areas where customers are looking for common capabilities. You know, networking for sure is one. And of course, one of our top announcements this week at Cisco Live was ACI Anywhere, which I think exemplifies this capability. If you saw the demonstration during Dave Geckler's keynote, you saw us delivering a consistent networking environment not only across multiple public clouds, but also with on-prem. Security is another place where people need standards and common capabilities. They want to access the innovation in the different clouds, but they want one security framework. Things like StealthWatch Cloud is great there. Analytics or app visibility, obviously Cisco App Dynamics is a key capability there and gives you a way of measuring and diagnosing application performance in a consistent and seamless way across multiple clouds and your on-prem environment. Then last but not least is things like management. And another one of our announcements this week here in Barcelona was the brand new Cloud Center Suite, which I'll talk a little bit more about. But that gives you multi-cloud management capabilities, including uh, cost optimization. So this is really, at a, at a core, how we're helping our customers. We're helping them with their on-prem capabilities. We're helping them in the in across multiple public clouds. And we're helping them tie that all together to get business results. Now, it's been a little bit of a journey 
you know, last year we talked about the Cisco multi-cloud portfolio, and this, this really came about because we got feedback from some of our partners and customers about 18 months ago that it was actually hard to see Cisco's cloud assets across what is actually a pretty large portfolio. So this is very simple. It's, it's sort of a secret decoder ring if you want. If you want to see some of the products from Cisco that will help you in the public cloud, this is a great place to start. Now, we break it into really four simple categories. One is cloud advisory. Most of our customers are looking for help. In fact, only 14% of enterprises, according to our data, have what they consider to be an optimal cloud strategy. So 86% are looking to improve their cloud strategy and looking for help. So there's fantastic advisory services available from Cisco as well as our partners. And then there's three product areas. Connect, protect, and consume. We were trying to keep this simple. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. But I wanted to show you the yellow things here are the things that we've added in the last year. Of course, ACI Anywhere we just announced this week. The Meraki VMX is their virtual appliance that runs uh, in the public cloud. Security, we've been very, very busy. In fact, Duo belongs on the list as well. Um, but we've got CloudLock, Titration, SaaS, and StealthWatch Cloud as new since last year. So we've been very busy. And then all of this connects to and works with our on-prem infrastructure, including our data center portfolio. Um, so that's kind of a, a product level lens. Um, let's look at sort of the timeline and what we've been up to. Last year, actually here at Cisco Live, we announced the Cisco Container Platform and Hyperflex 3.0, which brought the AnyCloud or multi-hypervisor approach. We followed that up in May by announcing Kubernetes support for App Dynamics and Cloud Center. Again, fitting that theme of Kubernetes really becoming the de facto way of orchestrating containers. Those were a bunch of core technologies and products that enable our customers to build cloud solutions. So we then came out with some solutions for our customers. You know, starting with the availability of the hybrid cloud solution uh, with Google Cloud, then followed up by a solution with SAP that gives hybrid capabilities for SAP Data Hub, and then finally, late last year, a hybrid solution with AWS. So you see us having announced some products, then bringing solutions so our customers can really get the results from those products. Then here at Cisco Live Barcelona, of course, we're announcing some more products with Cloud Center Suite, Hyperflex Everywhere, and ACI Anywhere. So let's talk about Cloud Center Suite. This is actually a, a big announcement for us. Um, it's the biggest release of Cloud Center since we acquired uh, the company Clicker that built the product. And it's a complete re-architecture of the product, really to respond to the feedback that we've gotten from Cloud Center customers uh, over the last couple of years. Um, and people use Cloud Center to get a few key results. One is to simplify multi-cloud management. You know, if you're running things in your on-prem data center and in multiple clouds, it can be really difficult to manage each application using a different framework. Cloud Center allows you to model your workload and deploy it across multiple clouds, and that's incredibly helpful. That helps our customers uh, enable, accelerate their time to value with their own cloud applications, and it makes it easier for them to adopt new clouds and take advantage of the innovation there. So that's Cloud Center's value prop. We got some feedback from customers on some new capabilities they'd like to see, and with Cloud Center Suite, we're delivering those. One is cost optimization. This is actually our most requested new feature. And in fact, last week, I saw a new survey of customers where it was one of the first surveys I've seen where the number one cloud adoption issue isn't security. It was actually cost optimization and management. So this is, I think, going to be a fantastic new capability for our customers. And then we're also added Action Orchestrator. Cloud Center provides a declarative model where you just model the workload, and then it automatically generates and executes the commands to instantiate that workload. But we got feedback from some customers that sometimes they needed the ability to actually script things, interface with other systems, and build workflows. And Action Orchestrator answers that need. And in fact, Action Orchestrator is being used to help automate the infrastructure here at Cisco Live in Barcelona. So this is real technology that Cisco is already using. It's going to be available to our customers very soon. We also heard from our customers they want more flexibility in the way they access the product. So we're introducing a SaaS version of the product. And we're also introducing feature-based pricing. It's a pretty comprehensive set of features. Customers told us they'd like to be able to adopt pieces at a time, perhaps get into cost optimization, then workload management, then orchestration. So they're going to be able to do that with a new Cloud Center suite. 
Now this is real. It's shipping uh, next month in February. The SAS version will be available in non-GDPR geographies next month. And for GDPR, including here in Europe, it'll be available this summer. So we're looking forward to having that in the market. I want to talk about a couple of use cases that we see for Cloud Center. One is IT as a service. And this is a fancy name, but really it's just bringing together the best of, of two different worlds. If you think about a traditional IT environment, there's very strong compliance and visibility for the IT department. It's necessary in most businesses, but it wasn't necessarily fast. Lots of IT departments have told me it takes them 45 to 60 days to provision resources for an internal client. Think about public cloud. Well, actually, if you have a credit card, you can go provision some resources before the end of our talk, um, but it's probably lacking visibility and compliance. IT as a service really tries to bring the best of those two things together by enabling the IT department to offer a catalog of resources on-prem and in the cloud to their internal customers so that their customers get rapid self-service, but IT still has the visibility and control that they need. This is a great solution with Cloud Center. Uh, we have a number of customers doing this. We have integrations uh, with solutions like ServiceNow to make that easier. Then the second use case I want to talk about there's a hybrid cloud use case. And in this case with AWS, the solution that we just made available in December, Cloud Center is a key part of this solution which enables a consistent uh, Kubernetes environment and actually enables you to manage the EKS environment and the on-prem CCP environment from the same console so that you can execute hybrid cloud workloads in a seamless way. Um, this is proving to be a very popular solution, I think, because of the popularity of Kubernetes and obviously uh, of AWS. So we're really excited about the announcements here this week. And in fact, to tell us more, I'm really excited to welcome Kostov Daz to the stage. Kostov leads product management for our entire computing portfolio, and he's going to share the latest innovations in HX and Intersight with us. Thank you, Kip. Thank you. <laughs> 10,000 accidents. There were 10,000 traffic accidents in the city of Barcelona last year. There were 256 deaths in the summer in all of Spain. And yes, there are a lot of cars on those freeways. Cars that flow from one place to another and sometimes don't quite behave and bump into each other. And when we think about this, one gets to think about what else flows in nature. Water flows, fish in those ocean currents flow together in large numbers, and they don't bump into each other. Birds in the sky fly in beautiful formations, and they don't bump into each other. Ducks don't fall out of the sky. That's the kind of thinking our automotive customers are going through as they try to design cars, as they try to infuse artificial intelligence into our automotives for a safer tomorrow. Our medical customers are trying to do the same thing. An MRI image of the brain used to be about 2,000 slices, 2,000 separate images. Today, it's 24,000 separate images. Now, we have a lot of competent doctors out there, but no doctor and no technician can actually parse through 24,000 images. A machine can, whether it's medicine, banking, retail, agriculture, our customers are starting to embrace artificial intelligence and machine learning. And I predict that in the next decade, in the next decade, that's going to be the new mission critical. The clouds that we rent and the clouds that we build are going to be for this new mission critical. And we will rent some of these clouds because it's faster. There are a lot of frameworks out there. It's easy to get started. We will rent some of these. But we will build a lot of these clouds. The data 
to train the models exists on-prem. And we will build those clouds to get trained on that data, to protect that core intellectual property that must reside on-prem, we will build those clouds. So it is going to be a true multi-cloud, mission-critical workload. And as we go through this process, we will face three challenges. The first is we need some enterprise-grade infrastructure to run this machine learning and to run this artificial intelligence workload on. It's got to be resilient. It's got to be something that fits into the workflows of our infrastructure. The second challenge is going to be connecting it to data sources. You all have built data lakes and pooled the data and cleansed the data, but that needs to be connected to the infrastructure that can train the models and process the data and infer from that data. The third challenge is going to be one of taming the software frameworks out there. So the good news is that a lot of this is open source. The bad news is that open source is kind of like the wild, wild west. There's new versions of PyTorch that come every week. There's new versions of all these frameworks. And as IT practitioners, all of us have to drive some sanity to make sure that what we put out there will work not only today, will work as the new version gets installed so that the data scientists inside the, inside the co company are happy and can run their models. So fortunately, we've got some solutions for these problems. On the infrastructure side, we've got solutions whether we want to do inference, we want to do training, we want to do test dev, we want to do machine learning, and if we really want to do that heavy duty deep learning, we just released the C480 ML. Eight GPUs, 180 terabytes of data, NVMe, high bandwidth backplane, this is the infrastructure if you really want to do that heavy duty training. On the connecting to the data sources side, what we've done is we've taken our blueprints for Hortonworks, for all of the data, big data workloads that we run, and we've created work, we have created blueprints and CVDs that marry those with the AI frameworks. And the same thing on the software framework side. What we've done is we've created Cisco validated designs, really blueprints, really recipes that say these versions are compatible, that this is how you connect a Hadoop system to your AI infrastructure, so that when we get it up and running, it becomes that much easier. So with the infrastructure, with the frameworks, and with the recipes, I think we have a pretty good solution. Sorry. Must be a cat video or a, or a uh, oh, hang on, it's Intersight. So uh, do you know Intersight? Intersight is our cloud-based system management as a service suite. We've taken UCS management, policy-driven, infrastructure's code, put it in the cloud so that we can do centralized monitoring, connected support, we can do comprehensive server management, we can do proactive guidance. In fact, the reason it was binging me was because it wanted to send me an advice. I'm going to show this to you. This is, uh, this is pretty cool. It's, it's, uh, it's really worth looking at. Lightning. Could we switch on? OK, so this is inner side. Um, what I'm looking at now is my servers. I can look at my Hyperflex clusters. Uh, I can look at my fabric interconnect. Uh, but let's see, look, let's look at this, uh, this Hyperflex cluster in here. And I can look in here. It tells me there's some, something that's critical. So the overall cluster storage capacity consumed is beyond the healthy threshold. That's not a good thing. It can give me that kind of a detail, but let's look at why was it, why was it binging me? And I believe 
it was trying to send me a security advisory. So this is the piece about proactive guidance, is that InnerSight can actually send you that proactive guidance. So it's trying to tell me that there is a Intel vulnerability, which can't be good. Um, but there must be a fix. Looks like we've got a, let me, let me send it to someone. Share. Uh, don't message, don't put it on Facebook. Mail. All right, Jeff, could you take care of this, please? All right, so let's, let's see what, what would happen now um, when, when Jeff gets to it. So when Jeff gets to InnerSight, and we can be done with the cell phones, so we can get done with that, what he gets to is something that looks like the InnerSight dashboard screen that looks something like this. He would get in there, he would look at this advisory, and it would say, here's a CPU side channel disclosure. This is what happened. This is the problem. He can get in there, and then he can say, which servers were affected? Well, there were 16 servers affected, 10 of a certain kind, 10 of a different kind. And he can decide, once he goes through all that literature, to say, do I want to upgrade it? You click Upgrade and the firmware gets upgraded. So from the cloud, I got a notification on my phone. I could act on it anywhere in the middle of a soccer game, in the middle of a presentation. I could send it to someone, and they could remediate it from the cloud to my infrastructure. That is pretty amazing. So. We've talked about the new mission critical. We've talked about how we're using the cloud to make our infrastructure much more proactive, much more resilient. But you need a better infrastructure. And that's the realization we came to two and a half years back when we built Hyperflex. And what we realized was that we could take our UCS foundations of software-defined compute. Marry that with a purpose-built file system, truly distributed, co-designed with our hardware. Marry that with a cloud platform with some of the innovations Kip talked about in Cloud Center and with Intersight. And we have, we have an infrastructure that can power any app across any cloud, anywhere. So this week, we launched some new things. In two and a half years, this infrastructure has gone from a new but really creative new infrastructure to becoming a magic quadrant leader, according to Gartner and Forrester. So what did we say this week? So what we announced this week was Hyperflex Anywhere. Hyperflex, that new infrastructure taken to the edge, a two-node form factor for those edge environments, connected with this nifty new innovation called a cloud witness, an invisible witness in the cloud, so that our data in our edge locations where there's not much IT, it's still safe, it's still secure, because when there's a problem, we've got a witness in the cloud to remediate it. We introduced more performance, Intel, Optane, all NVMe. We've been innovating not just within Cisco, but with our partners at Intel. We introduced a data acceleration engine so that the high-powered storage functions that don't need to take CPU cycles don't take CPU cycles and are offloaded. And finally, we introduced and expanded our multi-cloud integrations to also include OpenShift. Finally, all of this is part of the UCS family managed by InterSight. 
So <clears throat> I firmly believe that like many of our customers who are imagining a better tomorrow, a safer tomorrow, entry into new markets, a more profitable tomorrow, I think all of us can do that. And all of us can do that powered on the toolkits that Cisco is bringing to the table and with the creativity that all of you are bringing to the table. So with that, thank you. Now I'm going to invite Kip back to the stage. Thanks, Katie. Thank you. It's really exciting to see the innovations. And you can see just incredible pace of innovation from where we were with Hyperflex two, two and a half years ago to being a Magic Quadrant leader, announcing Hyperflex Edge, having a cloud management with Intersight, building out the ecosystem with the cloud players and platforms like uh, Red Hat OpenShift. Uh, just an incredible uh, amount of progress and we've just gotten great feedback from our customers on that as well. Um, so now, you know, I think it's always helpful to hear from actual customers and partners. You, you hear from us at Cisco, clearly we're excited about uh, what we're doing, um, but I think we have a great opportunity to have a conversation with an outside expert. And I'm, my uh, honor and privilege to invite uh, Jacques Rucard from Telendis uh, up to the stage. And we're just get, we have a few minutes to, to talk about how, what so all of this means uh, from Telendis's perspective. Uh, yeah. Thanks for joining us here. Um, so um, I guess uh, my first question for you is um, if you could maybe tell us a little bit about Telendis uh, and, and, and Luxembourg and your role uh, so the audience has a context. Okay, so Telendis is a company that operates out of Luxembourg. We belong to the Proximus group of companies and we are a long-term uh, Cisco partner for over 20 years. What we do is system integration. Uh, we are also a cloud operator and we are a telecom provider. And my role inside Telindus is uh, I'm, I'm in charge of solutions, um, pre-sales, and innovation. It's fantastic. So, you know, we talk about multi-cloud. Um, do, you, do you see that in, in your view of the market and with your customers, and is that an important factor? Absolutely, yeah. We have been operating our private cloud now for 2000, since 2011, so quite a long time. We have been using a Cisco technology at the basis, meaning we are offering our cloud based on a Flexport platform. And um, when we did that, that was a logical extension at the time of our outsourcing practice. So beyond just outsourcing you know, and sending people, managing the infrastructure on-prem to our customers, Starting 2011, we could do it really in a data center with Cisco technology. Now we want to take it to the next level because we see a clear drive towards a multi-cloud world and we want to use the same kind of approach, meaning a good governance in a strongly regulated market you know, with proven technology to uh, offer business outcomes to our customers. Yeah, no, I think it's very interesting to see kind of the intersection of the regulatory environment that you have to operate in and some of the developments in cloud. Um, you know, um, I guess uh, we were also talking a little bit about uh, abstraction. Yes. Well, let me take one step back and uh, say a few words about regulation. Uh, regulation is for many people, including the large cloud providers, a pain. We consider it more as a gain or as an enabler. And I will tell you why, just in a few words, without boring you with regulation. But um, if you look what's happening on a uh, European level, the European Banking Authority has issued some recommendations on how a bank can move workloads to the cloud. And I will give you just a couple of things that are really important there. For example, the recommendations of the EBA say clearly you need to be on con in control of the risk. You need to know what happens to your data. And last but not least, you need to have an exit strategy. Exit strategy means if for some reason you're obliged to get out of the public cloud and you need to move back to your private uh, infrastructure or to another cloud, you know, you need to be able to demonstrate that. And um, that is something where we believe that Cisco technology and trusted partners like ourselves can help our customers a lot. And Cisco has proven also that they can give a good experience of a public cloud type of setup in the private data center. Um, and this is something we believe in because if we, um, talk to our customers, you know, mainly banking customers. What they all want is the features of a public cloud in a private environment. 
And I think with the Cisco container platform and the Cisco um, hybrid cloud platform, we are in the right direction there together. Um, but what I always say, this is some abstraction layer you know, that we can now uh, demonstrate and implement in the private data center, meaning the container abstraction layer. So the question to keep would be, what is Cisco planning in that space? Do you want to go up, move up the abstraction layers further so that the customer can have a full public cloud experience in a private data center? No, it's a great question. It's interesting. You know, I, I would say there's, uh, I'm seeing good abstraction and bad abstraction uh, in uh, cloud these days. Um, the good abstractions are things like, uh, frankly, Kubernetes that abstract the way orchestration works and provides the opportunity for application developers to write software that runs in different environments and takes advantage of the native capabilities in whichever environment it's running in. Some of the abstraction that we're seeing um, work out not as well for a lot of customers is when people try to homogenize the entire cloud and try to abstract everything away because we see people getting stuck on kind of a lowest common denominator where they can't take advantage of the innovation or the unique capabilities um, in each cloud. Um, one of the things I think that we're seeing that helps with the, the challenge you mentioned about providing all the services in a private uh, on-prem context and uh, that are in a public context is people not only starting to abstract things but starting to implement things uh, like service meshes. You know, Istio I think is a, a prominent example of this. Uh, and it feeds into one of the trends I talked about earlier in terms of how you interface with existing applications. And we're seeing people providing uh, many services on-prem, but providing the connectors to be able to call services in the public cloud even from an on-prem workload when they need to, and vice versa, being able to develop an application in the public cloud and seamlessly call a capability on-prem. So I think there's uh, a good and bad abstractions. It's good ones give you portability, but still access to native capabilities. Um, as well as service mesh starting to uh, really connect those two environments. So we don't necessarily need to implement every function in both environments, but the two environments start to work together as a system. I guess my, we're, we're running out of time. I, I guess, guess my, my last question uh, for you is, what do you, what do you see going forward as you look out into 2019 and beyond? When we talk to our customers, again, mainly out of the banking sector, even the most conservative ones are now thinking about moving some stuff to the public cloud. And some, some of the uh, banking uh, managers tell me, well, I want to move everything into the cloud. Then I have a tendency to respond, let's first look at your application landscape, and then we'll try to guide you, you know, towards the best possible solution. And I don't believe the world is becoming simpler. I think it's becoming more complicated. And in that sense, um, if a bank or other, other, any other institution decides to go to the cloud, I think they need trust and security, and they need orientation. And I think uh, Cisco with the technology and us as a trusted partner are the right uh, people to help our customers to get the right business outcomes out of the hybrid cloud. No, we're seeing, uh, uh, like I said, we're seeing a lot of customers looking for help. This is a complex environment, so yes. I, I agree with that. Okay. Thank you again for joining us today. I really appreciate you. your insights. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and wrap us up here. Um, and you know, I think there's just a, a few key messages. Um, we really believe that, that Cisco, with our technology base, and then with partners like Telendus, can really help our customers on this multi-cloud journey. And we think that multi-cloud journey is one of the most important things in IT and in fact in business today. Um, so we're really excited about the way we've been able to grow our multi-cloud portfolio, grow our data center uh, capabilities, um, and really bring a stronger and stronger story to our partners and customers. Um, you know, there is um, a lot that you can do here at Cisco Live in Barcelona this week. You know, out on the, the floor, we've got demos of just about everything that I talked about. There's data center and cloud areas in the solution showcase. There's meetings you can sign up for and meet the engineers. Topics like Kubernetes, containers, Hyperflex. DevNet has some fantastic sessions on Kubernetes, hybrid cloud networking, uh, and Hyperflex. And then there's some additional sessions. Um, we've got uh, tomorrow uh, a great session on enabling analytics in a, in a multi-cloud and hybrid world. So thank you again for joining us here at Cisco Live, and thank you uh, for joining us for this session. Glad to have you back with us here in the Cisco TV studio. Thank you for tuning in. 
to this broadcast all over Europe, all over the world, wherever it is that you happen to be watching from. We are so glad to have you with us here today and throughout the week here at Cisco Live 2019 Barcelona. As you can see, we just finished another fantastic innovation showcase. This time we were talking about reimagining IT for a multi-cloud world. We had Gustav Doss with us, VP of Product Management, and Kip Compton, our Senior VP Engineering. And right now, even as we speak, Nish is running around out there on the World of Solutions show floor. She's waiting for Kip to uh, free up from the stage, and as soon as she gives me that thumbs up, we're going to throw it out to Nish and Kip, and they're going to have a good conversation, go over what we heard in the Innovation Showcase, maybe get a little background information as well. Customers are making the journey to digital transformation. Infrastructures have a whole lot more pressure on them these days than they ever have before. They have to span the enterprise data center, the cloud, the edge, that is that Cisco bridge we keep hearing and seeing everywhere that we go. Uh, Cisco and our partners, we bring the on-prem and the cloud native environments together and this way we can operate as one fantastic entity and that's so much of what we heard about in that showcase that we just completed. Again, we're so glad to have you with us here in the broadcast. We're going to run you right up to the next innovation showcase. We're going to be talking about business critical service innovations. Tony Brook, Alistair Wildman are going to be with us. Once again, I want to remind you to keep reaching out to us using hashtag C-L-E-U-R. We have got so much social media here at the event. We're gathering all of your tweets and your posts and every way that you reach out to us, I promise that we're going to keep reaching back to you as well. Hit that online portal and remember to keep watching all of this content anywhere that you like to watch it. We prefer that you go to CiscoLive.com because that gives you all that other deep, fun data that helps you get involved. If you want to watch on YouTube or on Facebook, that's perfectly fine as well. The trick is to continue to tune back into the broadcast. Always new, running 24 hours a day, even when we're not broadcasting, you get the replays of the stuff that you might have missed during the day's broadcast. We encourage you, as much as you possibly can, tune in with us, connect with us, tell us what you think. If you're really enjoying aspects of the broadcast, great, we want to hear it from you. If there are certain things you would like to see in the broadcast on future Cisco Live events, that is perfectly fine as well. We're always happy to hear your recommendations. Take those into consideration. All right, I've just been given word that Nish and Kip are available and ready for us. We're going to send it out to the Innovation Showcase with Kip Compton, our Senior VP, Cloud Platform and Solutions Group, and my friend Nish, over to you. Take it away. Thanks, Steve. Yes, I'm here at the World of Solutions and we've just had another great, fantastic innovation showcase. This time talking about the very uh, big topic of cloud. So I'm thrilled to be joined by Kip. Hi, Kip, how are you doing? Pretty good, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Uh, could you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit around your role and what you're doing here at Cisco? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm Kip Compton. I run the cloud uh, products and solutions group at Cisco, um, which really has a number of products in it, like the new Cloud Center suite that we announced here in Barcelona, but also works across Cisco on our overall cloud strategy with our customers. Got it, and you've just done a fantastic innovation talk here. Um, what were some of the key themes that were coming out in that talk? Well, you know, some of the key themes are really the challenges that our customers face with multi-cloud and the business imperative to overcome those challenges to get to the innovation uh, that they need there. And we talked about how Cisco's portfolio of products can help customers uh, solve some of the complexity and take advantage of uh, multi-cloud. So we often talk about on-prem um, and public cloud environments. So could you tell us about some of the challenges that you're hearing from customers? Um, what, what are some of the things that are happening in the industry? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, when we talk about multi-cloud, the on-prem environment is an indispensable part of that. Almost all of our customers need to bridge that environment with the public cloud. But there's a lot of challenges there. You know, how do you measure application performance across those environments? How do you achieve consistent networking and security across those environments? Um, and we've got great capabilities um, along with our partners to help our customers do that. And coming to Cloud Center and our partnership with AWS, could you tell us a bit more about that and how does that fit into the picture? Yeah, absolutely. You know, hybrid cloud being a critical element for our customers, we've been busy working with AWS and we're really excited to announce uh, in December uh, our hybrid solution with AWS for Kubernetes. And that leverages the new Cloud Center suite, but also HyperFlex, the Cisco container platform, and Cisco networking to give customers a seamless experience in running workloads between AWS and their on-prem Cisco data centers. Great, it sounds like a great partnership. So you had a customer join you, I believe, just now. So could you tell us a bit more around the background of the customer and what was the story that they were sharing here today? Yeah, absolutely, Jacques from Talendis joined us. Talendis is a great partner and customer of Cisco. 
Um, they operate clouds as well as help customers with their cloud journeys. And Jacques talked about how multi-cloud is indispensable for a lot of his customers, especially in regulated industries, where they need the flexibility to move between cloud environments to meet different regulatory requirements. And he talked about how Cisco's technology portfolio, combined with the services from partners like Talendis, can really help customers take advantage of this new world. Great. Um, so, could you tell us a bit more about the experience of Cisco Live and what is the cloud team showing here? No, it's fantastic. I mean, every year Cisco Live Barcelona is, or Europe is more exciting. Um, more people this year, we're showing more products. It's great to show how our multi-cloud portfolio has grown. You know, not only with the Cloud Center Suite announcement and the ACI Anywhere and Hyperflex Anywhere announcements uh, here at the show, but with the things that we've announced last year and the innovation that we can bring. So just a lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm. We're really excited uh, having a fantastic week. Great, thanks so much, Kip. Back to you in the studio. Sorry, hang on. Hi there guys, welcome back into the studio. Sorry about that, see I get distracted. We talk about how connection is such a huge part of Cisco Live, I just connected. People are walking by, it's a chance for us to see old friends and sometimes it even takes us away from the, uh, from the monitors in here. All right, so we're talking cloud, we've been talking cloud for a while here and we're going to kind of uh, try to put the button back on cloud here, but if you imagine your cloud world and the nature of cloud, that we make cloud simpler for you, that is really what it's all about. Public clouds, on-prem applications, infrastructure, what do you need to do? Here at Cisco, what we're all about is bringing together uh, networking and security and analytics and management. The point is, how do we help you connect and protect and consume clouds out there in this multi-cloud world better, smarter. Our Cisco Cloud Services, we let you power your multi-cloud world, we let you simplify it, we give you evolution into hybrid clouds so you get that competitive advantage and great success. I hope you'll take advantage, go and research Cisco Cloud jump on board, we're going to help to make that very easy to implement and keep you secure the entire way. Now we always say that the best way to tell our story here at Cisco is we talk to our customers, we let them tell the story. We've got a great video, you just heard the mention about that Jacques uh, Talendis. Talendis was featured in Kip and KD's uh, Innovation Showcase and they figured that was the right story to feature. We've got a short video on Talendis. Take a look at this, I'll see you in about two minutes. Talendos is a integrator, a telco, and a cloud operator. We offer a complete digital transformation multi-cloud strategy. You have a very uh, fragmented uh, world of IT providers. But if you look at the hyperscale providers, there are only four around. And that's a risk for a customer. You should certainly not work only with one provider. Every cloud is different, they offer different capabilities. We have to select what is best for our customers. That results very often in multi-cloud. We want to make sure that our customers don't get lost in this multi-cloud space. We want to enable them in the public cloud, but also in the private data center, but taking into account security aspects, networking aspects. Cisco is tackling the public cloud business with its hybrid solutions. A hybrid strategy is the strategy that we advise our customers to adopt. With Cisco we can have a single pane of glass, such that we achieve a platform independence between all the cloud providers. If a cloud goes down, you balance the load over to another one. You can run these applications wherever you want. And if you want to get out, you can get out anytime. You need to make sure how you can transition away from the public cloud. What's your exit strategy? Big scale cloud providers and the banks, they have sometimes a hard time to come to an agreement. We live in both worlds. We are, by the way, regulated ourselves by the financial regulator in this country and because of that we know the rules quite well. We do a certain level of customization by assembling the solutions in a way that make them comply. The tool set that Cisco is building on top resonates very well with the needs of our customer. It makes a lot of sense for us to work with Cisco. We feel that we are totally aligned. We don't want to have a vested interest in any of the public clouds. Cisco is agnostic towards the large vendors and that's why both Cisco and us are very successful in this multi-cloud strategy. Companies like Telindus help you work with different providers and companies like Cisco provide us the right technology to satisfy our customers' needs in a very complex multi-cloud world. The cloud revolution that we see coming is like a tsunami. We'll just roll over everybody and there's no way you can escape. The only thing that you can do is learn and adapt yourself to that new world.
Well, thank you so much, Jacques, and Talendis. Great, great, great partnership between Cisco and Talendis. And we're really grateful. This is the way you need to hear the stories told. They are absolutely vital stories. Cloud is power, cloud is agility, it is strength and this is what you need to get on board with in this multi-cloud world. We are going to go back out one more time to the World of Solutions show floor. Nish is standing by. We got another interview out there, don't you, my friend? I do, thanks, Steve. So we're here at the multi-cloud world booth. Hi, um, I'm here with Tuan. How are you doing, Tuan? I'm very great, thank you. So um, could you tell us a little bit about what you're showing here today in the World of Solutions? I certainly can, sure. Let me walk around and then, all right. Okay, so uh, what we'll be talking about today is the uh, evolution that our uh, multi-cloud management product is going through. So the product is called Cloud Center, historically, and now it's called uh, Cloud Center Suite. Uh, and um, one of the major things that has changed is that we're going from a VM-based delivery uh, type of platform to a Kubernetes-based platform. Uh, mainly, the reason why that's uh, relevant to our customers is that it helps them to uh, manage their cloud platform infrastructure the way that we manage our apps uh, on the iPhones or, or Android phones, right? So what, all we have to do is, you know, we go to our phone, we update our apps, and it's self-sustaining. It's just that easy. And the way that we're doing that in Cloud Center, let me show you, is that we're allowing our cloud architects and our um, cloud administrators to do the very same thing. All they have to do is press update, and then uh, we manage the sustainability of those updates and the maintenance windows. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, the thing to note is within this evolution, the Cloud Center, all of the, the capabilities that we delivered within Cloud Center are now coming into the workload manager module of Cloud Center Suite. Uh, so we've changed it from a single platform composed of different macro uh, components uh, into a, uh, a suite that has three major modules. I'm going to show you those modules, uh, one of which is Workload Manager. And Workload Manager has all of the, the uh, strong heritage of capabilities that was um, delivered by uh, Cloud Center, okay? Now, the other module is Cost Optimizer, uh, and Cost Optimizer is really positioned to save our customers money uh, wherever they're consuming their cloud uh, workloads and services, and then of course there's the Action Orchestrator. I'm going to show you that. So, what you're seeing here is just application profiles that are very familiar to our uh, Cloud Center customers. None of that goes away, right? All of the requirements for the application profiles are here uh, inside of the application uh, framework, the, the management uh, canvas. And then uh, for our customers to develop relationships within the tiers, it's just that easy. This really, really makes it very simple for uh, development teams or DevOps teams or even IT administrators who really have no uh, experience with Cloud Center uh, to um, interact with our uh, framework, right? And then of course, we still enable the capability to provide deployments to a hybrid cloud model. So uh, I was just talking to a customer, they can deploy, they have various clouds and they can deploy uh, different tiers to uh, different cloud providers. So all of that is there. Now the cost optimizer is very, very nice because it allows our customers to take a look at the cloud platform that hosts uh, most, the majority of their um, workloads, uh, where those workloads reside he's geographically, uh, what the growth trend is over time and whether that's expected within the uh, budget cycle, uh, and then of course, uh, cost by category. So many of our customers know what their consumption is uh, if you're referring to a compute, storage, network, but not the platform as a service uh, types of services. And so we're visualizing that here for our customers. That looks great, and it's very easy to use a dashboard and the way that it's presented as well. Thank you so much. So that's all that we have time for today, but Tuan, could you tell us where people can learn a bit more about this? Sure, so it's uh, the Cloud Center landing page uh, on Cisco. Um, yeah, and we've, we've published uh, new content there this week. Fantastic, so Cisco.com. That concludes this section, and hope to see you again in a second. So much, Nish, appreciate it. Yes, we are going to change topics a little bit now to one of my favorite areas of Cisco. We're going to talk 
about the customer experience. Boy, this is a huge, huge aspect of what we're doing here uh, at Cisco today. I'll give you a very brief introduction. I got Phil Wolfenden over here directly to my right, our VP of Customer Experience Centers in Emir. Uh, Mario Sebastian with us as well, head of our Customer Experience Global Service Provider in Emir. Boy, I'm telling you, these Customer Experience Centers are all the rage and all the talk. How is it going here at the show this week? Well, you, you, you're right, Steve. It's kind of it. the buzz. The buzz is around customer experience this uh, this year, and that whole new model of engaging customers differently to make sure they're getting the absolutely maximum value from their Cisco solution. That's the that's the topic of the day. It feels feels like something. You know? It's the lifeblood. Is this a matter of us just listening to what people want and responding to it? How did we get the idea to start doing these things in the first place? No, absolutely. It's, uh, let me give you just an example of a customer that is really living and embracing the customer success experience 